humans have influenced most of the Earth's ecosystems through resource extraction and production activities in ways that are often harmful to the environment. Yet, around the world, there are examples of communities that live in harmony with nature and are beneficial to biodiversity conservation. These communities' efforts to adapt to their surrounding environment and to enjoy its bounty from one generation to the next have created unique sustainable landscapes and seascapes that provide them with goods and services while still supporting a diversity of animal and plant species. These areas may be known by traditional names like Daesa in Spain, Ahupua in Hawaii, and Satoyama in Japan, while recently the term socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes has been coined to refer to them collectively. These strongholds of biodiversity and sustainable living are increasingly threatened by rapidly growing human demands, industrialization, urbanization, climate change, and other threats. This video introduces the indicators of resilience in socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes, a unique tool developed for engaging local communities in adaptive management of the landscapes and seascapes in which they live. This set of indicators is valuable for NGOs, development agencies, and policymakers working with local communities, and for the communities themselves to understand and then increase their capacity to endure in the face of social, economic, and environmental pressures. In other words, to improve their resilience. In this video, experts from IGES, United Nations University, and Conservation International will guide you through a step-by-step -step process for applying these indicators and you will learn how this can support communities to achieve and maintain resilience and sustainability in the local landscapes or seascapes on which they depend. A fundamental concept in this video course is socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes. These are areas where human society carries out production activities such that the interaction between people and the landscape maintains or enhances biodiversity while providing the community with the goods and services needed for their well-being. These places are characterized by a mosaic of land and resource uses, combining natural habitats with places where a variety of human production activities take place. But what happens when these communities and ecosystems experience pressures and shocks, when they suffer from natural disasters or sudden social changes, or when they face continuous changes in the climate and environment or in political and economic situations. Some may collapse with devastating effects on both livelihoods and the environment. Others will be able to overcome these shocks and carry on with little change, while some may even become stronger as a result of such events. This capacity to continue while absorbing, resisting, and recovering from shocks or impacts is called resilience and it is a key element in ensuring the long-term sustainability of socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes. Strengthening resilience is therefore critical, but achieving it requires a good understanding of both social and environmental conditions. Therefore, a way to assess resilience is essential so that stakeholders can develop an understanding of their landscape or seascape's strengths and weaknesses. This understanding can in turn lead to the effective development and implementation of practices and interventions that can address problems and strengthen resilience. The indicators of resilience in socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes were created specifically for this purpose. Resilience is, however, a complex concept that includes many different factors and is therefore not simple to assess. To help understand this difficulty, consider human health. There is no single factor that can tell whether a person is healthy or not. A thermometer measures body temperature and provides us with one indication of health, but doctors also consider blood pressure, medical history, and many other factors to assess a person's overall health. In the same way, the indicators of resilience provide information about 20 different key aspects of the community and landscape, categorized into five areas. The indicators, they are generally designed to be used in participatory assessment workshops. An assessment workshop can be organized in the local community with the participation of local community members 
and other relevant stakeholders. Participants are first introduced to key concepts related to resilience and are asked to consider the biodiversity and other important elements in their landscape or seascape, as well as events that have affected the community. The role of the facilitator is very important to foster effective discussion at this stage. An important component of this workshop is the structured discussion and scoring of the set of 20 indicators which capture communities' perception of the diverse factors affecting the resilience of their landscapes and seascapes. Once the participants have gained an understanding of the key terms and concepts, the facilitators then guided them through the indicators under each of the five areas and provided additional explanations where necessary. Following this, the participants discuss about how these indicators relate to their community, the landscape and the seascape, and they then give a score from one to five for each indicator. A score of one means the most unfavorable situation, while a five means highest value or capacity. Usually, the process of giving a score to a given indicator stimulates active exchange of views involving all workshop participants. The discussion and insights gained from such an exchange are just as important as agreed score, if not more. It is possible to also gain information on the perceived trend for each of the indicators. That is, whether the situation is improving, worsening, or staying the same. This video provides examples of indicators of each of the five area, key areas and shows the use of these indicators during an assessment workshop held in Agua Blanca, Ecuador in 2016. Detailed description and additional information on 20 indicators can be found in the publication Toolkit for the Indicators of Resilience in Social Ecological Production Landscapes and Seascapes. The first key area is landscape and seascape diversity and ecosystem protection. An example indicator in this area is ecosystem protection. Participants are asked if there are areas within the landscape or seascape that are protected for their ecological or cultural importance. Following the identification of this information, participants then provided their scores from 1 to 5 for this indicator. In the workshop in Ecuador, after each participant gave a score for this indicator individually, the group discussed the reasons behind the score they provided. Community members worked to reach consensus and assign a collective score for this indicator. The Agua Blanca community is located within a national park that is both outstanding ecological and archaeological features, so participants gave this indicator a high score. Additionally, participants discussed trends in relation to their indicators and agreed that the trend regarding ecosystem protection in their landscape was upward. The second key area is biodiversity. One of the indicators under biodiversity is sustainable management on common resources. And it's considered if the natural resource of the landscape or seascape are managed in the manner to avoid overexploitation and the depletion. Agroblanca's agricultural activities and the natural resource use are strictly managed first by the fact that they take place inside a national park and second by the community itself. Community aim to be low impact in its production activities. But at the workshop, Park Authority raised question about, for example, the practice of rising goats that could cause soil erosion. This provided an important avenue for communication between the community members and the Park Authorities, which allowed them to understand each other better and to find a way to ensure these kind of activities will not damage the park's ecosystem. The third key area is knowledge and innovation. In this area, one indicator is women's knowledge. It checks 
if their knowledge and skills are recognized and respected in the community. In Agra Brianka, workshop participants agree that women are respected for taking the lead in developing innovative income sources by operating a geothermal lagoon spa and producing handicraft. So again, they score their community relatively high for this indicator. The fourth key area is governance and social equity. And one of its indicators is community-based landscape and seascape governance. This is concerned with whether the community has capable, accountable, and transparent local institutions in place for the effective governance of its resources and the local biodiversity. The community of Agua Blanca has organized a number of committees. For example, there is a committee for handicrafts where women get together and discuss issues. An elected member from this committee then represents the group in discussions with the community's leadership and at cultural and other events. This level of community organization led the community to give itself a high score for this indicator. The fifth key area is livelihoods and well-being. An indicator in this area is biodiversity-based livelihoods, which asks if the community uses local biodiversity in innovative ways for its livelihood. Agua Blanca uses local biodiversity in many innovative ways. For example, termite nests are used as fire starters. Algarrobo fruits are sold as a natural disinfectant to shrimp farms. And tagua or harina seeds are collected for use in jewelry and handicrafts. Discussions on this indicator actually helped the community to recognize these everyday activities as innovative uses of biodiversity and to better understand their importance for community livelihoods. Once all the indicators have been discussed and scored by participants, they are then plotted on the graph so that it is easy to visualize areas of strengths and weaknesses in the community and its landscape and seascapes. Based on these results, community members and other stakeholders participating in the workshop can discuss and make plans toward improving resilience. For example, in Agua Blanca, that participants selected the indicators on sustainable management of common resources and biodiversity-based livelihood as priority discussion topics, and these were seen as places with most room for improvement and opportunity for innovation. From these discussions, the community decided to take action on first updating the landscape management plan to include, include more reforestation activities, and second, identifying new marketable products that can be made in the community. They also discussed who, who would lead and implement the activities and who are potential allies and supporters for each action plan. Through the use of these indicators and the participatory assessment workshops, local communities and other stakeholders engaged in active analysis and discussion of how to manage natural resources, foster the well-being of community and other stakeholders, and ultimately improve resilience. The indicators can help you to, one, better understand resilience and socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes. Two, develop and implement resilience strengthening strategies. Three, enhance communication and collaboration among stakeholders. And four, empower their decision-making processes and management approaches. The result from the assessment support communities in participatory resource management and the planning processes by helping to understand current condition, track trends, and identify priority area of action. The indicators can continue to be used for regular monitoring and evaluation, which supports subsequent assessment and update to resource management strategies. This effort, in turn, leads to better communication among stakeholders and strengths uh, local processes for adaptive management, community empowerment, and resilience. 
as the use of these indicators expand to communities around the world. The ultimate goal is realizing sustainable society in harmony with nature.